Janma Dyasya Yato Nivyad Itaratas Charte Suavidya Swarat Tene Brahma Hidaya Adikavaye Muyantiat Sudayaha Tejo Vari Madam Yata Vini Mayo Yatra Trisargo Mesha Damna Svena Sada Nirasta Kuhakam Satyam Param Di Mahi O my Lord, Sri Krishna, son of Vasudeva. O all pervading personality Godhead. I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. And the primal cause of all causes. Of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universes. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. It is he only a first and part of the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. The original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations of water seen on fire or land seen on water, only because of him do the material universes temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature. A fear appear factual, although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna, who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode, which is forever free from the illusory representations in the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Dharma Pujita Kaitravotra Paramo Nirmatsaranam Satam Vedyam Vastavam Atra Vastu Shivadam Tapa Trayon Mulanam Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite Kimba Parir Ishwaraha Sadyohide Avarudite Tra Kriti bihi susu subhistakshanat. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth, which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity is sufficient in itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam, by this culture of knowledge. The Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama kalpaturur galitam falam Sukamukad amrita dravya samyutam Pibata bhagavatam rasam alayam Muhur aho raska bhuvi bhavakaha O oh, expert and thoughtful man, relish Srimad Bhagavatam, the mature fruit of the desire to Vedic literatures. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadeva Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Although its nectarian juice was already relishable for all, including liberated souls. Shinvatam Swakata Krishna 
Kunya Shravana Kirtana. Hridiantak Sto I Abhadrani. Vidunati Srihitsatam. To hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures. Or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita is itself righteous activity. And for one who hears about Krishna, Lord Krishna, who is dwelling in everyone's heart, acts as a best wishing friend and purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. Nasta presu badresu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Sloke Bhakti Bhavati Naistiki. In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about the Bhagavat, uh, as he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam, and from the devotees, he becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. Tadarajas tamo bhavo, tamalo badayas chee, chee te tarinavidam, stitvam satve prasiddhi. By development of devotional service, one becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance, and thus material lust and avarice are diminished. Evam prasanna manaso bhagavat bhakti yogataha. Bhagavat Tattva Vigyanam Mukta Sangha Sijayate. When these impurities are wiped away, the candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness, becomes enlivened by devotional service, and understands the science of God perfectly. Vidyate Hridaya Grantis. Chidyante Sarvasam Saya Chidyante Tashikaramani Drista Evat Manishwari Thus Bhakti Yoga severs the hard knot of material affection and enables one to come at once to the stage of a Samsayam Samagram. Understanding of the Supreme Absolute Truth Personality of Godhead. Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 15, Verse Number 44. Udichim Pavive Sasam Gatapurvan Mahatmabi Hidi Brahma Param Dhyayan Navarteta Yatogata Translation He then started towards the north, treading the path accepted by his forefathers and great men to devote himself completely to the thought of the Supreme Personality of God, and he lived that way wherever he went. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. It is understood from this verse that Maharaj Yudhisthira followed in the footsteps of his forefathers and great devotees of the Lord. We have discussed many times before that the system of Varnashrama Dharma, as it was strictly followed by the inhabitants of the world, specifically by those who inhabited the Airavata, I. Aryavrata, province of the world, emphasizes the importance of leaving all household connections at a certain stage of life. The training and education was so important, and thus a respectable person like Maharaj Yudhisthira 
had to leave all family connection for self-realization and going back to God. No king or a respectable gentleman would continue family life till the end because that was considered suicidal and against the interest of the perfection of human life. In order to be free from all family encumbrances and devotee, uh, in order to be free from all family encumbrances and devotee oneself, uh, no, and devote, yeah, I'm sorry, <laughs> and devote oneself cent per cent in the devotional service of the Lord, this system is always recommended for everyone because it is the path of authority. The Lord instructs in the Bhagavad Gita 1862 that one must become a devotee of the Lord at least at the last stage of one's life. A sincere soul of the Lord, like Maharaj Yudhisthira, must abide by the instruction of the Lord for his own interest. The specific words Brahma Param indicate Lord Sri Krishna. This is corroborated in the Bhagavad Gita 10.13 by Arjuna with reference to great authorities like Asita, Devala, Narada, and Vyasa. Thus, Maharaj Yudhisthira, while leaving home for the north, constantly remembered Lord Sri Krishna within himself, following in the footsteps of his forefathers as well as the great devotees of all times. Srila Prabhupada, Patita Pavana Ki Jai. Yes, yeah, so uh, 1862 says Tameva Saranam Gacha Sarva Bhavina Bharata Tat Prasadat Param Santim Stanam Prabhsyasi Sasvatam O Skyna Bharata, surrender unto him utterly. By his grace, you will attain transcendental peace and the supreme and eternal abode. So that's what Prabhupada says. He says, the Lord instructs in the Bhagavad Gita 1862 that one must become a devotee of the Lord at least at the last stage of one's life. And in the purport to 1862, Prabhupada says, a living entity should therefore surrender unto the supreme personality of Godhead, who is situated in everyone's heart, and that will relieve him from all kinds of miseries of this material existence. By such surrender, not only will one be released from all miseries of this life, but at the end, he will reach the Supreme God. The transcendental world is described in the Vedic literature, Rig Veda 1, 22, 20, as Tad Vishnu Paramam Padam, since all of creation is the kingdom of God, Everything material is actually spiritual. But Paramam Padam specifically refers to the eternal abode, which is called the spiritual sky or Vaikuntha. In the 15th chapter, Bhagavad Gita is stated, Sarvasya Chaham Hridi Sanivista. The Lord is seated in everyone's heart. So, this recommendation that one should surrender unto the super soul sitting within means that one should surrender unto the Supreme Personality of God at Krishna. Krishna has already been accepted by Arjuna as the Supreme. He was accepted in the 10th chapter as Param Brahma Param Dhamma. Arjuna has accepted Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead and the Supreme Abode of all living entities, not only because of his personal experience, but also because of the evidence of great authorities like Narada, Asita, Devala, and Vyasa. So this, everything material is actually spiritual. That is a very, very profound thought. And this is explained in depth right in the beginning of the Chaitanya Charitamrita, <clears throat> where it says, Adi Lila 150. It says, uh, The Supreme Personality of Godhead, Swayam Bhagavan, taught Brahma and made him self-realized. The English maxim, 
that God helps those who help themselves is also applicable in the transcendental realm. There are many instances in the revealed scriptures of the personality of Godhead acting as a spiritual master from within. The personality of Godhead was the spiritual master who instructed Brahma, the original living being, in the cosmic creation. When Brahma was first created, he could not apply his creative energy to arrange the cosmic situation. At first, there was only sound vibrating the word tapa, which indicates the acceptance of hardships for spiritual realization. Refraining from sensual enjoyment, one should voluntarily accept all sorts of difficulties for spiritual realization. This is called tapasya. An enjoyer of the senses can never realize God, godliness, or the science of theistic knowledge. Thus, when Brahma, initiated by Sri Krishna by the sound vibration, tapa, engaged himself in acts of austerity, by the pleasure of Vishnu, he was able to visualize the transcendental world, Sri Vaikuntha, through transcendental realization. Modern science can communicate using material discoveries such as radio, television, and computers, but the science invoked by the austerities of Sri Brahma the original father of mankind, was still more subtle. In time, material scientists may also know how we can communicate with the Vaikuntha world. Lord Brahma inquired about the potency of the Supreme Lord and the Personality of God had answered his inquiry in the following six consecutive statements. These instructions, which are reproduced from Srimad Bhagavatam 2.9.31-36, were imparted by the Personality of Godhead acting as the Supreme Spiritual Master. <clears throat> well, here, this everything material is actually spiritual. Uh, the uh, the uh, uh, in verse 53, Adi Lila, it says, Cosmic uh, prior to the cosmic creation, only I exist, and no phenomena exist, either gross, subtle, or primordial. After creation, only I exist in everything. And after annihilation, only I remain eternally. <laughs> this is why everything material is actually spiritual, because material energy is Krishna's energy. And uh, that means that he's non-different from it. Yet, he is different. So, in the purport, Prabhupada says, Aham means I. Therefore, the speaker who's saying Aham must have his own personality. The Mayavadi philosophers interpret this word Aham as referring to the impersonal Brahman. The Mayavadis are very proud of their grammatical knowledge, but any person who has actual knowledge of grammar can understand that Aham means I, and that I refers to a personality. Therefore, the personality of Godhead speaking to Brahma uses aham while describing his own transcendental form. Aham has a specific meaning. It is not a vague term that can be whimsically interpreted. Aham, when spoken by Krishna, refers to the Supreme Personality of Godhead and nothing else. So this shows how foolish my bodies are. They say aham refers to the impersonal Brahman. Before the creation and after its dissolution, only the Supreme Personality of Godhead and his associates exist. There is no existence of the material elements. This is confirmed in the Vedic literature. Vasadeva va idam agra asinna brahmana chasankara. The meaning of this mantra is that before creation, there was no existence of Brahma or Shiva, for only Vishnu existed. Vishnu exists in his abode, the Vaikuntas. There are innumerable Vaikuntha planets in the spiritual sky, and on each of them Vishnu resides with his associates and his paraphernalia. It is also confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita that although the creation is periodically dissolved, there's another abode which is never dissolved. The word creation refers to the material creation because in the spiritual world everything exists eternally and there's no creation 
or dissolution. The Lord indicates herein that before the material creation, he existed in fullness with all transcendental opulences, including all strength, all wealth, all beauty, all knowledge, all fame, and all renunciation. If one thinks of a king, he automatically thinks of his secretaries, ministers, military commanders, palaces, and so on. Since a king has such opulences, one can simply try to imagine the opulences of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. When the Lord says, Aham, therefore, it is to be understood that he exists with full potency, including all opulences. The word yat refers to Brahman, the impersonal effulgence of the Lord. In the Brahma Samhita 540, it is said, Tat Brahma Niskalam, Anantam Asesa Bhutam. The Brahman effulgence expands unlimitedly, just as the sun is a localized planet with the sunshine expanding unlimitedly from that source. So the absolute truth is the Supreme Personality of Godhead with his effulgence of energy, Brahman, expanding unlimitedly. From that Brahman energy, the creation appears, just as a cloud appears in sunshine. From the cloud comes rain. From the rain comes vegetation. And from the vegetation come fruits and flowers, which are the basis of subsistence for many other forms of life. Similarly, the effulgent bodily luster of the Supreme Lord is the cause of the creation of infinite universes. The Brahman effulgence is impersonal, but the cause of that energy is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. From him, in his abode, the Vaikuntas, this Brahma Jyoti emanates. He is never impersonal. Since impersonalists cannot understand the source of the Brahman energy, they mistakenly choose to think that impersonal Brahman, uh, the, the ultimate or absolute goal, they, they, they choose to think this impersonal Brahman, the ultimate or absolute goal. But as stated in Upanishads, one has to penetrate the impersonal effulgence to see the face of the Supreme Lord. If one desires to reach the source of the sunshine, he has to travel through the sunshine to reach the sun and then meet the predominating deity there. The absolute truth is the Supreme Person, Bhagavan, as Srimad Bhagavatam explains. Sat means effect, and asat means cause, and param refers to the ultimate truth, which is transcendental to cause and effect. The cause of the creation is called the mahatattva, or total material energy, and its effect is the creation itself. But neither cause nor effect existed in the beginning. They emanated from the Supreme Personality of Godhead, as did the energy of time. This is stated in the Vedanta Sutra, Janmadasya Yata. The source of birth of the cosmic manifestation, or Mahatattva, is the Personality of Godhead. This is confirmed throughout Srimad Bhagavatam and the Bhagavad Gita. In the Bhagavad Gita 10.8, the Lord says, Aham Sarvasya Prabhava. I am the fountainhead of all emanations. The material cosmos, being temporary, is sometimes manifest and sometimes unmanifest, but its energy emanates from the Supreme Absolute Lord. Before the creation, there was neither cause nor effect, but the Supreme Personality of God existed with his full opulence and energy. So you see, Krishna is everything, but everything is not Krishna. Or as Prabhupada says here, Everything material is actually spiritual. Now, Krishna consciousness is the process of removing the veil of maya from the jyoti, from the spiritual light that is the substratum of all existence in the spiritual world and material world. And once that veil of maya, that, that, that cloud, that obstructs the free shining of the sun is removed, then one sees everything is actually spiritual. Uh, but it, as soon as one looks at everything with the desire to exploit it for sense gratification, they don't see its spiritual aspect. Just like if uh, someone is sitting in this class and we cover that person with 15 tarps from Home Depot. That person is so covered they can hardly hear the class. And if they hear it, it's very 
uh, it's not it's muddled and we can't see that person but the person is there though you see so this whole energy of the material creation the mahat tattva and so forth it's all coming from krishna it's, it says inferior spiritual energy apara prakriti so it's spiritual and it's eternal also actually the 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 matter and spirit both are existing before creation and they continue to exist after dis destruction so uh, this is difficult for a scientist to accept because they see everything in terms of cause and effect but cause and effect are only in the material world there's no cause and effect in the spiritual world because everything's eternal and therefore people get confused in fact the uh, the the uh, main argument of the atheists, the smart atheists, let's put it like that, to defeat the theists is, you say they say everything has a cause. Therefore, what is the cause of Krishna? You say that's their that's their ultimate argument. But we don't say. Everything has a cause. It's only in the material world the cause and effect exists. It doesn't exist in the spiritual world because everything's eternal. That defeats their argument. But they have no experience of it. But yet, there is some experience. Anything that is unlimited is coming from the fourth dimension. The, the, we live in three-dimensional world. Land, west, width, and breath. But in the fourth dimension, length, width, and breadth are infinite. So, therefore, the energy of the sun is actually coming, it's, it's the reflection of Brahma Jyoti. So it's infinitely flowing into the material world. You can't stop it. And it's never actually destroyed because it's energy. And, uh, and it's spiritual. So we see the fourth dimension we see it in the energy coming from the sun. And we see it in, in Hanuman carrying a mountain. We see it in Vamanadev stretching, he was a midget, but he's stretching his foot uh, beyond the material universe. These are all fourth dimension uh, manifestations where something becomes infinite. But as long as we eat meat and engage in sense gratification, we don't understand that. We think everything is finite and uh, birth, death, old age, and disease is normal. It's not normal. And all these things are artificial impositions on people who want to enjoy the material world independent of Krishna. But as soon as people want to dedicate everything in the material world to Krishna's service, they begin to see the spiritual aspect. But as long as they refuse to do that and, they, and everything they do is for their own benefit, they don't see anything. They're blind. It doesn't matter even if uh, a person has, 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 has read the Bhagavad Gita, as long as their view of life is to exploit nature for their own selfishness they don't understand anything okay so uh, the uh, Maharaj Yudhisthira is uh, completely shutting out any attraction any thought of uh, him being a king or enjoying palatial uh, life or kingly life or having a family and this thing and that thing. It's completely shut out of his mind now. He's just focused on Krishna and he's preparing himself to leave his body and he's following his great ancestors who did the same thing. Every one of us should do this, uh, but not in an irresponsible way. We shouldn't reject family and our responsibilities. But once uh, the children are grown and they're established, and the husband and wife together must begin the process of leaving attachment to ha 
home and hearth behind them by going together on Parikrama to holy places and associating with saintly persons and regularly hearing and chanting Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam and discussing it and engaged full time 24 hours a day in devotional service. They should do it together. And at a certain point, if the husband is confident and the wife also uh, gives her permission, the husband can take sannyas and wife also lives like a sannyasi. It's not that he takes sannyas and she gain, engages in sense gratification. No, they both have to live like sannyasis. And Prabhupada says that also. The wife also lives like a sannyasi even after his separation. And uh, in that way, uh, people can go back to Godhead. But if people stay uh, right up to the moment of death in the comforts of family life and uh, you know, soft beds and, and uh, no, no tapasya, then uh, they, uh, they, just, they, they won't be able to leave this material world. They'll stay in it. So, therefore, that's why I read that first thing, uh, the first uh, Adi Lila 150, because it's, it cl clearly shows how Brahma became enlightened. What was the first thing he heard, when, even before he saw Krishna? Tapa. And he understood that he needs to engage in uh, tapasya. And, and what is tapasya? What Prabhupada defines it here. He says that tapasya is voluntarily accepting discomfort or difficulties in order to advance in Krishna consciousness. And, and, and there are going to be difficulties because there are many obstacles put in one's path by uh, Maya herself. So Prabhupada says, refraining from sensual enjoyment, one should voluntarily accept all sorts of difficulties for spiritual realization. This is called tapasya. The enjoyer of the senses can never realize God. Godliness or the science of theistic knowledge. So when Brahma was initiated by Sri Krishna by the sound vibration, tapa, he engaged himself in acts of austerity. By the pleasure of Vishnu, he was able to visualize the transcendental world, Sri Vaikuntha, through transcendental realization. So Krishna would give the knowledge. He said, this is a real, this is a real uh, what you call pedagogic theory. Pedagogic theory means the theory of how you are educated. It's not the way they teach it in school. This is the way it should be taught. One should engage in voluntary tapasya and to please the Lord and to accept all difficulties without complaining. And, uh, and one's only goal should be to please uh, Guru and Krishna. And then Krishna gives knowledge. He will reveal the whole spiritual world, just like he did to Brahma. And that's real knowledge. All glories to Srila Prabhupada Kija. Are there any questions? Uh,